Well, Bristol City seemingly have a bit of a goal-scoring problem on their hands here. Just three shots on target recorded across the three games in the league so far. Two goals and they've both been from set pieces. No goals from open play so far. And the third worst XG4 in the championship in the first three games. I think it's quite easy sometimes to make an extreme conclusion within a fan base, whether that's manager, goal scoring, just after three games. But we have to remember it's a short sample size. But this has been actually a bit of a problem for a while for Bristol City. Since that Antoine Semenyo sale in January, the last 13 games of last season, Bristol City only scored 12 goals, that's less than a goal per game, and just generally lost that kind of attacking spark which we had the season before with Vyman, Semenyo and Martin up top. I think it's important to note that we've kind of changed the way we play since that Vyman, Semenyo and Martin season where we counter-attacked a lot. That's kind of meant that we've helped our defence and we've become much more solid defensively and some of our defenders have excelled, i.e. Zach Vyman Rob Atkinson when he was fit. So there have been some perks in terms of changing it, but the obvious issue there was a back end of that last season without Antoine Semenyo and we've kind of been betting in Anis Mometti and Harry Cornick is that we've lacked just that cutting edge up top. Ever since that Antoine Semenyo sale, Bristol City have been kind of moving around a few parts up top, especially really with Harry Cornick and Anis Mometti both coming in. In January, we're still trying to find a place for them in the team. Harry Cornick would mainly play off the right, Mometti off the left. But in terms of how they play, it's kind of hard to fit a lot of the players in with Tommy Conway, Vyman, Naki Wells, all up there, all trying to fight for several different positions. It's given Nigel Pearson a lot of options, but it also meant it's also meant that we've not really settled on a starting front three if we are going to carry with a fluid front three, that is. I mean, certainly injuries haven't helped. Andy Vyman started on opening day. He's now injured with a heel problem. Tommy Conway on the bench, came off the bench on opening day. He got injured pulling his hamstrings, so that's kind of meant that we've been maybe looking at the market a little bit. Harry Cornick, Sam Bell, Mehmeti, Sykes, they've all been tr trusted up there, but it just hasn't clicked, and that, in my opinion, is the main problem. If it's not clicking for a while, we're going to have to wait a long time for Tommy Conway and Andy Vyman to be fully fit and then hopefully help City fire up top. Arguably, our main problem is creativity from the wide areas and in midfield we all know that we lack goals from midfield we thought J Jason Knight being deployed in a slightly higher position may kind of solve that problem he did unbelievably well in that number 10 position against Oxford getting a couple of goals but again we can put a lot of fingers at Alex Scott going out the door and going oh well there's our creativity out the door but we all know that one of Alex Scott's kind of weaknesses if you want uh, was his goals and assists and he will improve on that but at the at City he wasn't really massive in terms of goal contributions so we had to kind of rely on our front three and that once again is a lot for the front three to carry we need to kind of spread out our goals and to be honest from set pieces as well we don't look much of a threat because without Atkinson we uh, don't look much of a threat because we have a lack of height within the team. We can always look at the market. Obviously, we've been linked with a few midfielders who are kind of attacking. Maybe some are defensive, some are just number eight. If we can add goals from midfield, that would take such a massive burden off the front three at the moment. And we're kind of limited in our options with that Andy Vine and Tommy Conway for the foreseeable future. So I think it's it's important that we give the front three some time because that because they are kind of still getting used to each other and Pearson quite frankly, has not settled on a front three so far with constant chopping and changing and front the, the main number nine as well has been constantly changed. So I think stability, whoever we go with, that Sykes, Cornick, Bell, Mimetti, Wells, um, whoever it is, it's got to be stability. Otherwise, we'll constantly be looking at more options and there'll be then we'll be left with more problems than answers. We haven't really been able to get our fullbacks in good attacking advanced positions either. Campering was absolutely brilliant last season at getting forward and just offering a bit of a threat and offering a bit of a different option. And he was really good at driving uh, into the box. And if maybe not the best cross game across, he always looked a bit of a threat. And any decent ball across would mean that we'd have a massive chance. George Tanner maybe not on the same level in terms of attacking wise, but certainly can put a good ball in and 
has the technical quality to play a few little uh, neat balls through. But we just haven't been able to get them in those attacking positions against Preston. Well, Preston set up very well in terms of limiting the balls to our uh, fullbacks and Millwall. We just weren't able to get them in good positions, which is our fault, really, because we had the majority of possession in the game. And against Birmingham, well, their fullbacks pinned us, pinned us right back. So Pring and Tanner weren't a bit able to get forward and help out those front three. Pearson, after Birmingham, mentioned we need to get more quality crosses into, into the front three. And... As that's fine, but without Tommy Conway and without height in there, well, Harry Connick's a bit of a physical presence, but he's playing on the right. So is he really going to get into those central areas and fight for balls in the box? I don't know. You tell me. So it's it's like, OK, try and get balls into the box, but Sam Bell isn't going to win anything. I don't think Naki Wells is that tall. He's a, again, he's a nuisance in terms of pressing and uh, pace, but he can't. He won't. He won't win balls in the area up against Millwall centre backs, Preston centre backs, and Birmingham centre backs. It's 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 not going to happen. So some things sometimes Pearson needs to maybe take accountability and go. Actually, you know what? Long ball and cross into the box might not work with Sam Bell up against Dion Sanderson and Kevin Long for ninety minutes. I think the crucial thing for us is we need to move the ball quicker. When we're in those areas, we get the ball over the halfway line and we're kind of like, oh, we, ugh, there's no space here. So we need to work the defence around because we've had more possession against Millwall. We've had more possession against Birmingham. We just need to move the ball quicker. We need to make their defence tire. We just need to get the ball into good positions. And when things aren't going great, we just kind of revert to long ball. And that's really frustrating because you'd think there is more than enough quality in our midfield and in our fullbacks to try and get attacking attacking position and try and work something down either flank and it's just not quite there at the moment i think it will eventually click and i think eventually we will start scoring goals but main things are we need stable front three need a stable midfield uh, whether that's campering or hayden roberts at fullback we need one of them to make sure that position is stable uh george Turner right back or oh, ross mccrory when he comes back you know you never know so I think there's a lot of kind of moving parts and a lot of unanswered questions. And I think that's kind of equating to the fact that we're not really scoring many goals and the lack of creative creativity within the midfield is a massive worry. And whether that's addressing the transfer market or not, I honestly don't know whether we're looking to get a 10 or an 8 or a 6. would be would be very interesting because I think we need a 6 and a 10, quite, quite honestly. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see how Bristol play these uh, next two weeks in the transfer window in terms of addressing the creativity problems and whether we get a forward in to replace uh, Tommy Conway on the loan deal or something something along those lines. So in conclusion, I think we just need to move the ball quicker in, in good areas and I think we just need to work their defence a bit more. Have shots, because at the moment we're not having enough shots and whether they're on target or not, just, just, try, and, just try and have a go. You're not going to score without having a shot. That's simple. Really, so I think it's very important for City try and create some chances, whether that's goals from outside the box, whether that's crosses, just need to create some chances. And goals, in my opinion, will eventually come. Just need to be a bit patient with this side. So that is it. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, hit like. If you haven't already, subscribe to the H Robin Stop YouTube channel for more Bristol City content. In the future, I talked about how we can address our goal scoring issues. In this one, how do you think we can address our goal scoring issues? Whether we look in the transfer market for a recognised number nine, I suppose, with anything well, Lackey Wells is there. Uh, but what? How do we address our midfield issues and lack of creativity there? And even in our wide areas, Anis Mametti and Harry Cornick haven't really been able to provide much in terms of goal contributions so far in a City shirt. How do you think we solve our goal scoring issues? I know it's three games, but this has been a problem for half a season and these three games so hopefully it's addressed pretty soon and hopefully we are looking at here in five games time and go actually you know what we've addressed that pretty quickly and pretty efficiently